Greetings of the day. I'm Dr. Nandita Palshetkar, currently the head of department of Leelawati IVF Center and the medical director of Seven Bloom IVF Centers all over the country. Today, what I'd like to discuss is how infertility is evaluated in women with PCOS. It's very important to know which factors are there. We all know that infertility affects around 15% of the couples around the world. You know, couples who are identified, we describe them as an infertile couple when they do not conceive after 12 months of regular sexual intercourse, at least two to three times a week, and then they are asked to get tested. If you look at polycystic ovarian syndrome, it is a major cause of infertility. It accounts for nearly 80% of the women with anovulatory infertility. It is really a very common disorder affecting 7-15% to of the women in reproductive age, with genetic, environmental and lifestyle factors playing a very important role in its development. In fact, where I practice in Delhi, nearly 2 out of 3 patients are PCOS. In PCOS, fertility is adversely affected by an individual being overweight, having hyperandrogenism and having an elevated serum concentration of LH. So this, these particular factors are very important to be evaluated because they play a role in the fertility management. So how do we improve the chances of pregnancy? The woman may be suffering from PCOS if the following features are seen. Irregular absent menstrual cycles, evidence of excess male hormone, that's hyperandrogenism, and how does that present like hirsutism with excess male pattern of hair growth and acne. These are the classical signs of hyperandrogenism. Of course, obesity, insulin resistance is a major problem in our country. And we do know that India is the diabetic capital of the world. And the last but not always, the enlarged polycystic appearance of the ovaries on ultrasound, like a mother of pearl necklace. Diagnosis of PCOS can be accomplished with a very careful history, physical examination, transvaginal ultrasound for assessing ovarian morphology and of course laboratory testing. So what are the different tests, laboratory tests that we would do for PCOS, especially in an infertile couple? I think one of the most important factors is hyperandrogenism. Hyperandrogenism, of course, can be diagnosed clinically if she has signs of acne, hirsutism, or biochemically. Biochemically, we do serum levels of testosterone, either total testosterone or free testosterone, and of course, dehydroepiandrosterone sulfate, DHEAS, which we say. You know, if that is increased, it could be an adrenal source of androgens. So it's very important to evaluate this when you have a patient with hyperandrogenism. Then assessment of the menstrual cycle disturbance and ovulation is very important. So if the woman has irregular cycles, what do you mean by that? You know, cycles more than 35 days or under 21 days. And she comes for more than two years after the onset of menarche. These are likely to reflect oligoovulation or anovulation. So how do we assess ovulation? I mean, it is usually by measuring the serum progesterone during the mid luteal phase. And also what helps us is measurement of the gonadotropins, FSH and LH in the early follicular phase, that is day one to day five of the cycle. Or sometimes if the patient is amenorrhea, you can do a random test also. Measurement of the serum ratio, LH to FSH is very important. Generally in healthy women, the ratio is one is to two. But in women with PCOS, this ratio becomes reversed and it might reach as high as 2 or 3. It is not diagnostic but is, you know, indicative or it supports the diagnosis. And remember that if your LH is high, we need to get it lower so that the fertility potential of the, uh, you know, the patient is enhanced. But today what I really like to diagnose PCOS is the AMH level. I mean, we no longer do the FSH-LH levels unless it is in a clinical trial basis.
So AMH actually relates with the number of follicles in the ovary and is a useful measure of the ovarian reserve also. And you can do it any time of the period. You know, you don't have to do it on day two or day three like the FSH LH. There are certain differential diagnoses which we need to look at. And those are, you know, these mimic the clinical features of PCOS, but you must rule out. You must check the serum TSH level, the serum prolactin level, and the 17 hydroxy progesterone level also. Because what happens is in thyroid dysfunction, hyperprolactinemia, and non classical congenital adrenal hyperplasia can actually present like a PCOS patient. Insulin resistance is very, very important. I think uh, the impaired glucose tolerance and type 2 diabetes mellitus has to be ruled out. Uh, testing of insulin levels for evaluation of insulin resistance is actually not done practically. Uh, we don't really do it on all our patients, but it is, uh, you know, it's really very perfect to tell us that there's insulin resistance. But what we do instead is the oral glucose tolerance test with a fasting and a 2-hour glucose after 75 grams of glucose. And that is used for screening impaired glucose tolerance or type 2 diabetes mellitus. In fact, in my patients, I also do a glycosylated hemoglobin because that also gives me an idea of this. The sugar control over the last few weeks has not been good, then I do the IGT or glucose tolerance test in her. The tests for excluding other causes of infertility include you know, you can always do a steroid profile which covers the aldosterone, the androstenedione, the cortisol, the corticosterone and a vitamin profile including vitamin D and a D2 and D3. In fact, sometimes the total vitamin D profile is done but it, this is not very practical and we generally just do a vitamin D3 level. The T3 and T4 levels of course. So friends, I would like to sum it up and say that early and correct diagnosis through various specific causes related tests can lead to prompt treatment and desirable outcomes in PCOS management. So just to summarize, thyroid, prolactin, you do a DHES, you do a AMH and an ultrasound. I think this should really help us in the diagnosis of PCOS. We only do the additional tests when we feel that there is a need to rule out other factors. Thank you.